Why well, yeah, over <laughs> over the good returns? We might have been a bit cheeky just prior to starting. Hello, Matty Markham. Hello, Paul. I'd almost forgotten what you look like. It's nice to see you again. Uh, I've been a little bit busy. It's good to see you. Good to catch up. Good to talk New Zealand harness racing too. Been a great uh, couple of months of racing, and um, it's only starting to hot up really in the North Island, isn't it? Yeah, obviously a massive week this week with a bit of trans-Tasman interest, obviously, as well. Uh, of course, the race by Grins for the Pacers and the uh, the TAB Mobile Trot, which is going to be one of the most intriguing races I think I've seen in New Zealand for a very long time. Uh, obviously, we're talking post-barrier draw, which has just added a little bit more spice to it. And I'm sure we'll talk a bit more in depth about that race uh, in, the, in the coming minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, whatever, however long we're going to talk for, Paul. No, nah, well, that's always one of our worries. That is exactly sure. The show will be a little bit different tonight. We are just going to concentrate predominantly on Cambridge. We will touch base on a couple of things at the end. Happened uh, last Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry. Um, and then some of the things we might have seen since we haven't done one of these shows. But um, it will be back regularly um, as of this week. It will be continuing to be pumped out. Um, going from there, the only time I won't be doing it is when I'm over there. So hopefully that will be very shortly soon. We have a special guest to start the show off with, though. David Branch is joining us. Firstly, David, welcome to the show. Yeah, afternoon, guys. Great to be here. But yeah, just after, oh no, it's well and truly afternoon here in the in How are the nerves, mate? How's the build up? <laughs> yeah, they're all right. It was nice, uh, nice getting last night ticked off. That that sort of milestone, the draws are done. That's how their com- conversation can start. And um, yeah, now it now it's just everything crossed that the I mean to get a bit of rain on Thursday, but it's looking like it'll pass and give us a nice night on Friday, which is what we want. Um, how does the track hold up to it? Uh, it'll be fine. So we just um, about three, four weeks ago, we did a complete resurface. So we took 400 odd tons off and um, completely resurfaced it. So uh, it'll it'll hold up in any weather, but that's not what we want. <laughs> we want a nice fine night for all the all the people we've got coming along. Maddie, if you've got anything to say, by all means, jump in. Okay. He was going. I wasn't sure. He was. He was mucking around. Under, um, general admission tickets and those sorts of things. David, um, the boring stuff. Is there still, you know, possibility for people to rock up on the night and be able to be a part of it? Yeah, definitely. So we're we're ahead of where we were this time last year. So we're expecting to land somewhere around high three thousands. Um, our goal is always to try and sell out at the five thousand. I don't know if we'll quite get there, but uh, late three thousands, early early 4,000 people on course, which is going to give us, uh, obviously we've got such a great viewing track, everyone will be trackside, made some improvements from last year to spread the crowds out along the home straight a bit more. So, um, yeah, providing we get a good night's good night's weather, uh, I'm sure sure it'll be, the atmosphere will be great. That was one thing I loved last year was the atmosphere. I spoke to Ellen Tormey, and we'll touch on that in a sec, uh, but I spoke to Ellen Tormey about it, and I just said to her, I said, you, she's in for a, a real treat. It, it has a unique atmosphere, doesn't it, this night? Yeah, as I said, um, such a great viewing track with the grass the whole way along. But, uh, you know, we, we market it to non-racing people as, as Cambridge's biggest party. So, um, and trying to get that out all around the Waikato so people can come. Um, obviously, expose them to, to the, the best harness racing we can we can put on. But, um, yeah, also to just, just get people here for a good time, really. That's what it's all about as well. Outside of the racing, you've got a band afterwards. Yeah, so we've got uh, so been able to do our vision of having the after party on the track. So so that was pretty cool. So replicating that again this year, uh, the band we've got coming over is Coterie. So they're a New Zealand-born uh, but Perth-based band. Uh, so they've just done a sold-out uh, New Zealand summer tour. So it's pretty cool to have them over here, and they're going to bring a lot of interest as well. So uh, the race by Grins will be the last race, 10 past 9. We'll get the presentations done, the track cleared, and then uh, we drop the fences and... Uh, everyone runs out on the track and the band starts up. So, yeah, looking forward to that at the end of the night as well. And that, so about half past nine, caught the 10, you'd be expecting that to be rolling out? <clears throat> yeah, probably about 20 minutes. So we've got to lace, uh, get, the, get the winning horse, obviously. Uh, presentation's done off the track, and then we've got to lay some cables, put up some security fencing. But it took about 10, 20 minutes last last year. So about at 9.30, we'll, we'll be into the party for, for about an hour and a half. Yeah, and have, have a lot of fun. What else have you got planned, mate? Uh, what else have we got? So we've got um, put a lot of work into trying to strengthen the undercard. Yep. So we've got uh, the Dorothy Cuts um, Invitational, which is which is pretty cool. So that's 
uh, really playing on that Trans Tasman rivalry. So six of the um, six Kiwi lady drivers versus six Aussies. So just just to add another level of interest. So I think from memory that might be race, uh, race four? three. No, race four. Four. Six, race six, four. Six, race four. Yep. Six, yeah. 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 So that um, obviously having. The, the level of talent that we've got there, one's coming across, and then, and then locally as well, that's just going to add something else to the night. Yeah, no, it is. And I know, as I said, I just did an interview with Alan Tormey that will get posted uh, probably after this one. Um, but, yeah, it, um, she's super excited to go across there and, uh, yeah, just highlights the strengths of the ladies. A lot of guys probably wouldn't have heard about it, but Alan's driven a 1,000 plus. I think she's nearly at 1,100 winners um, in her career. And, uh Yep, she's a terrific lady driver that a lot of people you know, like don't know about her because um, that's just the strength of them. They're expected to do that. Yeah, yeah, that, no, it's awesome, and and as I say, just just adds to the undercard because um, that extra talking point and um, yeah, just lets us play on that rivalry even more, which is which is um, yeah, which is adding so much depth to the to the whole night. No, absolutely. No. Do you do have any questions, mate? Yeah, well, I'll put another hat on. Um, David, obviously, we're talking to a largely Australian crowd and um, not many of them may be aware of the uh, the Boys Get Paid movement that we've got over here in New Zealand. You've got a group of them on course tonight. Um, just how important do you think it is from a New Zealand racing point of view to have these guys, given the social media following that they've got and the amount of eyeballs that they manage to put on race meetings, um, having them as the part of your night must be must be pretty exciting. Again, I know they were there at the uh, the last instalment of the Harness Jewels a few years ago too, so got a good taste as to what they're capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think you can't really understate the importance of of, the, of boys get paid and what they've done. Um, predominantly to thoroughbred racing in New Zealand, so to have that crossover on, onto a harness meeting is is um, is absolutely huge. So uh, for anyone that doesn't know, yeah, they, they uh, absolutely bring the atmosphere. So um, uh, I think it was one of the last it was the last harness jewels meeting here. It might have been the last race that Dexter done one, and there was about 150 people in the in the grandstand chanting Dexter done, and so you, so you get that sort of atmosphere um, mixed with eyeballs on harness racing that um that wouldn't otherwise be here so yeah as you say they're um well, they're gonna have a contingent on course but uh the strength as well is it'll be the first national um punters club but solely focused on harness and um you know they they absolutely dominate the Karaka million hype and talk uh, for the thoroughbred so it's great to have great to have that crossing over to the harness racing as well they have uh, 27,500 followers on Facebook, I see, but it's a private group. I gather that's because it's a punting group. Well, no, it's, you can join. Anyone can join. Uh, you just got to go through some steps to be uh, um, allocated a spot on the page, and there's there's plenty of banter on there and plenty of winners as well. And uh, we are hoping to have a $100,000 pool to play with on Friday night for the Nationwide Pundits Club. So uh, we've already had one bet. And uh, as Branchy said, I remember that Dexter Dunn chant at the last race of the Harness Jewels. Well, I tell you what, if Muscle Mountain happens to win the trot on Friday night and Don't Stop Dreaming wins the race by Grins, it'll be a chance for Natalie Rasmussen because we took a $10,000 multi on Friday, uh, Muscle Mountain into Don't Stop Dreaming to return 100 k So uh, we've already got that bet on. Um, and you can actually still get involved. If you know a Kiwi, if you're over in Australia and you know a Kiwi with a TAB account, uh, get them to throw some money in for you because it's just done through the TAB website over here in New Zealand and there's about 60,000 in the pool already. So uh, we're very excited to be a part of uh, what is a great night of harness racing. I know that. And uh, I mean, Fitzy is certainly uh, pouring through the form at the moment trying to find a few winners. If you become a member of that group, that Facebook page, Matty, will you get updates through the night? Is that how it'll work? Yeah, so there's an app as well that uh, will do push notifications, but all those bets will be placed uh, through the web's other social media pages as well. Yep, very, very good. That's boys get paid, join the group. Um, it's it's free to join, I gather, Matty? It is, yep. Well, not the punters club, it's not. You've got to pay into that, but you can go anything from a, a dollar up to a million if you like. Um, so, yeah, get involved. No, absolutely. Dave, thank you. Good luck. Um, great initiative from Cambridge. Um, you've got everyone over here talking as well. I was just talking to Louise Toolman, of course, she's got the Harasta Trotters, Yabby Dam Farms um, hat on, but she said she's never just heard anything quite like it. It's just massive the uh, the attention it's garnered over here. Um, got a lot of, I would imagine, administrators over here a little bit envious and jealous. Um, and hats off to you guys, I think that's awesome. 
yeah, cheers, Paul. It's it's um it's it's amazing to see it all come together, but a lot of hard work uh, goes in behind the scenes. Is certainly not something I could ever do on my own. So fortunate to have such a good team here um, behind me and, and a board that are so supportive that lets us, you know, roll the dice on some of these things. And and yeah, we couldn't be more excited. No. Well done. Thank you, Dave. Good luck. And uh, awesome. actually, cheers, Dave, cheers, if you've got a, if you've got a new hat, don't be scared to send it. You know your address. No, I'll get, I'll get one for you. Easy. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. See ya. All right. Catch you so, uh, David, David Branch. Don't look at me like that. I saw the look. You're like, oh, he's There's not. There's no such that. thing as a free lunch in Paul Campbell's world. <laughs> <laughs> mate, it's a, it is a, a, a massive, massive meeting. Um, are you guys over there getting the vibe from the Australians? Like, is it there, is there that feedback coming back? I imagine it's bigger in New Zealand, but the feedback coming back, you know, what it means over here in Australia as well, especially this trot race. Yeah, I think it is the trot race at the moment that's mm. that's hogging the attention. Um, just with the fact, you know, if we'd gone back six months ago, let's say, for instance, um, Call Me The Breeze and RC Phoenix, both of them hadn't beaten Just Believe. That's happened in the, in the last handful of starts. So all of a sudden, that little aura that was sitting around uh, just believe isn't quite as strong as what it was, and I'm not saying that they're going to beat him again uh, this week. But I mean, I'm a big follower on Twitter and social media, and oh, sorry, it's X now, not Twitter. Um, and and a lot of obviously Australian harness racing people are on that platform, and there's a lot of talk on there, which is exciting to see. And I think it'll only ramp up as we get closer and closer to race night too. And from a New Zealand perspective, having that many eyeballs coming in and enjoying uh, what we're putting on show over here in New Zealand is really, really exciting. And obviously the, the long-term benefit too with some of these horses sticking around for some of our other feature races in the coming month to six weeks. Yeah, um, some horses might be going overseas. Some horses might be hanging around and saying for some good races, which is really, really good. Uh, I'll give the NZB guys really culminates to that May 23rd, 24th time slot with the weanling sales and then... Road Cup, Auckland Cup night on the 24th. So it's going to be a massive, massive night. And, um, you know, hats off to New Zealand. I was there two years ago, mate. Before we do a form thing, I was there two years ago. It was doom and gloom because everyone had to take a haircut because there was a um, stakes reduction. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of Aussies wanting to move to New Zealand, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And I, I think we're on that upward trajectory again. Um, there, are, there are some things that still need to be tidied up within the industry. I think that to make it long term successful. But the the introduction of Entain here, I really probably can't stress just how much of a positive impact I think that's had on racing in general in this country. We're seeing things that we never thought we'd see, um, you know, and these sort of races like what we've got at Cambridge on Friday night are the future, I think. And a lot of other sort of little mini series, mini races that we're starting to see creep into the calendar as well. So we're in a good space and, you know, I've been a Juno and involved in this industry for 36 years now. And if I had a dollar for every person that told me, or every time I was told that the industry is uh, going to be dead in the next 10 years, uh, I'd be a very, very rich man. I probably would have punted most of it, to be fair. But, um, you know, I, I get really tired of hearing that conversation because, you know, there are still people out here that, that love what they do and are happy going to the races and happy racing their horses, whether it be at Cambridge on a group one night like Friday night or Meffin on the grass on a Sunday or Timaru on a Wednesday. It doesn't matter, you know. Uh, we're in a good space and we're going forward and, and any change is good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's all doom and gloom. Get off your backside and do something about it. Um, and that's the best way way to do it. Mate, we're going to start backwards um, from here. Unfortunately, that beep, beep is off. My email account wasn't working before. I think it's working now, Matty. That's what we're going to keep getting lots of beeps going through the uh, the phones. But um, we might start backwards. We might start with the race by Grins. Are you right? You lost your audio. I'm just turning you off. Turning me off. There you go. I can hear you again. Okay, something. I was seeing you doing funny things. We'll start backwards, Matty. Um, we're going to preview. Um, the races, but we'll actually start with the Grins, which is still like it's a million dollar race. Um, we say how much the trot race is. No, he's got no audio. I at have all. no sound. What happened? I haven't touched anything, mate. Um, you talk for a minute and I'll figure this out. I'll keep talking and see you see if you can find it. Can you find it at all or not? There we go. You got it now. We're back. So, wonder what happened then? Oh, I think my headphones died. Oh, the volume, the uh, battery. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. 
It's been that long since I've used them because it's been that long since you rang me. So um, I forgot to charge them. <laughs> but we're good now. Right, carry on. I'm getting that out. No, we, oh, we're going to leave it in. Oh, we'll leave that in. Who cares? We didn't say anything. I'm, no, I better not. I better get rid of that finger. Hang on. Well, Matty, we're going to start it backwards. We, uh, we're going to preview the race by Grins first. Million dollar race. Um, can't be undersold. We say about how well the trotting race is um, and the, the I suppose the talk that it's generated. It's a million dollar race on a harness racing carnival. We need to celebrate this race for what it actually is. Oh, absolutely. And it is going to be an absolute firecracker, this race. Out of the gate, especially, that first 200 metres is going to be... You go through that field, you've got Kango who can leave the gate. Don't Stop Dreaming who can leave the gate. Old Town Road who can leave the gate. Don't underestimate how quick Max Shard can get out. And then you've got Merlin drawn five with Speak the Truth will come into barrier six and better eclipse at seven. That is a very, very quick front line. Um, most people will look at that race and go, oh, well, Natalie's just going to stroll to the front and lead and win. Well, it might not be quite that simple because there's going to be that much pressure going into that first bend uh, coming from out wide that, yeah, something's going to have to give at some point and someone's going to have to back out and it's going to be really interesting. But I think the barrier draw for this race has just made it so much more intriguing. I Would think. Of it, yeah. That, would, that, that in itself is interesting. Because, as you say, people say, don't stop dreaming, it's just going to find its way to the top. I don't think that's a, uh, that's the case. I think people are underselling a couple of horses in the field too. Um, so th th there's definitely that. You you mentioned last week's race, um, and you said it threw up a lot of stories. For mine, last week's race stamped Merlin. He's a horse that I've always loved and got a real soft spot for and how strong and dominant he was last week. Now, I know there was horses behind looking for runs and, and all the rest. He did all the work. He, he had the toughest run. He did all the work. He was the one out there and, and doing it. Yep, he might have to still do a lot of work in this race here, but he's just a jet, I reckon. Absolutely. Um, and if you put them in a straight line and run them up and down 100 times, don't stop dreaming in Merlin, that is, it's probably going to be a 50-50 split yeah. between them. Oh, I've got no doubt about that. Um, to me, I thought don't stop dreaming's run last week was as good, if not better, than Merlin's for a couple of reasons. Merlin got, yes, it did it tough, but he actually got to control the speed from Park. He set the tempo for that race sitting Park, Zachary did. Obviously, the stable mate being inside him helped a little bit there because he was able to control it. Um, to be coming that wide around that last bend at Cambridge and finding the line in the manner in which Don't Stop Dreaming did, I thought, was exceptional. But then again, there were five or six horses in behind that were equally as strong through the line. I would throw my head up in the air and say that if Self Assure got clear at the 200 metre mark, he won that race last week. Yep. He's out of doubt in the world. He still hasn't got out. No, no. <laughs> um, and he's won this race before. I really believe that him and Mark Purden have just had a bit of alone time over the last three weeks and they've just been quietly working away together and... I know having a conversation with Mark and Nathan probably three, four weeks ago, there was talk of retirement because they were starting to scratch their heads a little bit about him. Uh, well, after that run last week, he's right back. And if Don't Stop Dreaming doesn't find the front for some reason, guess who's going to be following him every step of the way? Self-assured. Yep. So, I mean, you can make a case for any of them. Old Town Road was very, very unlucky last week. Um, Max Shard found the line well. So the Kiwis in this race are all on track as far as I'm concerned. Even South Coast Arden I thought was good last week. Throwing in Speak the Truth and Better Eclipse who have drawn the outside of the front line does throw a little bit of a spanner in the works for them. But I think we will see particularly Speak the Truth going forward at some point and trying to get up onto the speed. And if we have a Don't Stop Dreaming in front Merlin sitting parked scenario... <laughs> when he comes looking, uh, then it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a little bit disappointing the way the draw has worked out because those two horses didn't partake in that race last week, and I think they're the only two horses that weren't in it. Um, and then they get the outside barrier draws. So the intrigue of them not being in that race has sort of nearly been negated through their barrier draws, unfortunately, hasn't it? It has, and I actually feel sorry for Better Eclipse because I don't think Better Eclipse has ever had a good barrier draw. <laughs> in any run it's had in New Zealand since it's been with uh, Jess Tubbs and Greg. So uh, not eight, sorry, is not an ideal draw, but he went a super race last year in this race, run fourth. Um, and he's the sort of horse that if something ridiculous happens up in front and he treats into it, well, you know, he's going to finish off the race strongly. So 
it is probably one of the more even <laughs> group one races I've seen for, or listed races I've seen for a very long time and uh, a lot of it's going to come down to what happens in that first 200 metres and oh, I've got some phone calls to make in the next 24 to 48 hours to try and figure out how that's going to unfold. Um, great for Kango, well done Arna Donnelly getting in and Barrier 1 really throws him into the race now, um, gives him a good chance, he's going to be at worst you would imagine three fence. Um, yeah, he becomes a great top four option the way he went last week. Um, he deserved a place in the race for me even before yeah. what happened, um, to be fair. And having David Butcher out there just adds another dimension to the race because David's not afraid to do something out of the box. And we know Kengo can really, really leave the gate when he wants to. So who knows? He might want to hold up around that first bend and then weigh up his options. So uh, I think he's a live top four chance. Uh, yep. Being on the markers over here in New Zealand is just liquid gold at the moment. If you're uh, one, two, three fence turning for home in any big race in New Zealand, you're a major, major hope. No matter what, I think she was three the fence last year, might have been four the fence, and would have run an easy third, except yep. for uh, her manners leaving, uh, which was you know um, no fault of her own. But um, she was 100 to one, and she just gave everyone a great sight for everywhere up until the last 50 to 100 metres. So, yeah, isn't it amazing this race? Before I get your numbers, sooner the better has not been rated to mention. And he's flying. He's just doing an amazing job. Barrier draw is so cruel for him. But I just love him. He's just one of those cool dude horses, I reckon. Hard to imagine that a horse that's run second in a Miracle Mile to leap to fame is not really rating a mention in a race in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> things got a bit tricky for him when he drew <laughs> the outside of the, the second row. But in so many ways, I'm not actually that concerned about it if I'm his connections because if I feel like he can plot a path, I actually think he's a really, really good follower of speed. He's drawn so well on most of our big races over here that he's had to use that gate speed early to get into a forward position and it's maybe just left him a little bit lacking at the other end of the races without that little bit of fight. But we saw how he can close off in the Miracle Mile when he ran second there and he's very, very quick. There's no doubt about that. So again, he's another one yet into the mix. What are your numbers? Who are you picking? Uh, I'm going Don't Stop Dreaming on top to beat Merlin. Uh, Self Assure goes in for third and Speak the Truth, who I am very much looking forward to seeing in action over here in New Zealand. So, uh, yeah, going to go around the two, the five, the ten, and the seven. Nothing sort of out of this world. I'll get them. Oh, now I've got your name in front. I'll get it in a sec, Matty. I'm just up there. Now we've now I've got rid of your name, and it is, it is all good. So, sorry, the two. Uh, the two, the five, the ten, and the seven. Speak the truth. Good good little get, because he's a lovely horse. Driven by a, a New Zealander. You probably know Adam very well, do you? I do. I remember Adam when he was kicking around down in the deep south here in New Zealand and, and driving a few winners. Good to see him back on New Zealand soil and really, really pleased to hear that the plan is that he's going to stick around, speak the truth for both uh, the New Zealand Messenger and the Taylor Mile at Auckland um, in the immediate future. Well, that is great. That is good, really good, actually. So, and it'll give a bit of Queensland intrigue as well, I suppose. Um, means he doesn't have to contest to leap the fame. So, um, yeah, Shannon Price got a great team of horses as well. We'll go to the tab trot now, mate. Um, what a, a cracking race. And I think Barrier Draws have made this for everyone, probably except for the connections of the eight. But it's a really, really intriguing race on paper, isn't it? It is. It is. Um... <laughs> Don't, don't, um, yeah, I'm not that worried as a Muscle Mountain man. I have a funny feeling that if Ben Hope wanted to lead, he still could. There you go. That horse, that, that horse is that quick that he could slingshot across and be parked or, or lead. I, yeah. I don't think, because we haven't seen him over on your side of the Tasman Sea, I think there is a, a bit of a misconception about Muscle Mountain in Australia sometimes. And that's not a negative thing. I just think it's because you haven't had a real good chance to see him on on your turf doing what he does best. If you'd seen him at Addington and those two runs back from a spell, um, that last start win was just breathtaking. The manner in which he picks horses up and puts them away. Um, but he's going to have to be every bit that good because there is going to be a lot of pressure there early. I got into trouble one year because I one time because I said that uh, I think he's the equal, if not the best, horse in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, Trotter, that was, and that was ahead of Just Believe, Queen Alita, um, and um, the other horse, which was an ex-New uh, Zealand horse whose name's escaped me just at the minute. 
they ran one, two, three in a race at Bendigo. And I told everyone, well, the seriously, the best horse is a horse called Muscle Mountain. I think I still stand by that at the time. I just think at the minute, Call Me the Breeze, RC Phoenix, Just Believe have probably got better um, since I made that call at that time. But you got to just go back to that Row Cup against Sunday's son. And I know he got beat. The work that he did, like you said, Ben was, I think it was three, four back the fence early on going in around that first turn, popped out three deep, charged to the front, then settled again, then came out, had a red-hot crack. He did everything. And I remember Natalie Rasmussen came up and gave him a cuddle and said, that is as good a drive as you can get. It's unfair that you got beaten. He was he was beaten by a, a bloody good horse, Sunday Sun. Another horse that the Australians never got to. So I think lining form up, and even Oscar, we don't know anything about Oscar's form over here. I mean, this is the, the whole conundrum now that these horses don't travel at the minute because of the prize money. The, the, this race has really thrown up so much intrigue. Yeah, you're right. Um, from an Australian perspective, I think you're probably better posed to answer it than I am. Who's your early leader out of the four Aussies? Because they've obviously drawn one, two, three, four. I think RC Phoenix. My, my take on it is I would imagine RC Phoenix, but potentially hand up to Call Me The Breeze. I don't think they fire Call Me The Breeze off. I think he's got enough speed to lead them, but they had the trouble in uh, the race where he ran fourth. He got trucking. And now that was over 2,800, but he just found got too wound up. They reckon, I know Anton's very, very strong on how much gate speed he's got. I think if they just blaze the gate, he would lead them, but I think he might sort of strongly work to the gate. I'm not saying they're just going to grab hold and let him go there, but I think the intentions will be made, but they won't launch him flat out off the gate. Could be wrong, but yeah. RC Phoenix is very quick. I don't think Muscle Mountain, as quick as he is, and I know how quick he is, I don't think he could cross the three horses underneath him. Even, like, Just Believe's great out of the gate. He's just not brilliant. That's the difference. And and the mayor's just not quite going good enough. I don't think they could afford to get into that sort of a speed burn just at the minute. She's going great, but just not the old Queen of Leader. I think we'll see sharp improvement from her this week, just on reports I've heard that they expected a lot of improvement out of her. Well, she's going to have to improve a lot. Um, yeah. Oscar Bonavina is an interesting runner. Uh, obviously drawn one the second line and on the second line by himself, which means that Mark Burden has a few options early. Um, if we're predicting that one, two, three, four, I'm potentially going to run the gate, or at least one, two, three, he's got an option straight away to get off the fence mm. and potentially end up in the one, one if Mark drives, if luck goes Mark's way. Now, he is very quick at the business end of the races, and we saw him back to somewhere near his best when he sat on Queen Alita's back last week and beat her and did it quite comfortably. Um, so, yeah, I the way that the, the barrier draws worked, you would be very surprised if it wasn't an Australian victory, and it's just going to depend probably who settles in front of who. Um, but definitely don't ride, it, ride out um, either Muscle Mountain or Oscar Bonavina because they are two trotters that I've seen enough of to know that they are capable of doing something quite extraordinary if given the opportunity, and it would not be a surprise to me to see either of them win. It's actually quite intriguing too because both those horses, Muscle Mountain and Oscar, brilliant finishing speed. They, mm -hmm. they know how to finish races off and finish them off strong. They both are winners, um, as the whole field is. But, I mean, they are serious winners. They're horses that will put their head out uh, and somehow get themselves across the line. So I, do, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think I, I think Call Me the Breeze will win. I love RC Phoenix. He's the horse next year. I think if you're a slot holder, you walk up straight after the race and put your hand on Chris Finozio's shoulder and say, introduce yourself and say you want this horse because he's a serious, serious horse. There's no worries there. But he's young. He's only a five-year-old taking on some pretty hardened horses going forward. Um, and, yeah, I'm a huge – I like Muscle Mountain and Oscar. I think they could definitely finish in the places. And you let, let's say it's leaving horse like Just Believe almost out of it in a way, which is scary because he doesn't deserve that. He's, he's a great horse. He's a superstar. Well, he's sitting right up there for me um, as one of the, the best winning chances in the race because mm – -hmm. He's just such a versatile horse. And I think what what probably is worthy of being factored in is that travel factor and the new surroundings. And I, I know that a few of them have had a bowl around Cambridge this week and, and had a good look at the place. But, you know, you go and throw, what are we going to see, maybe 3,500 people out there in front, you know. There is a chance for a few horses to get a little bit wound up. Um, and I think those ones, particularly over here, that have experienced, say, 
New Zealand Trotting Cup day and the crowd that that brings or uh, into the Mingham Grand Final night like we saw last year. And just because Just Believe so well travelled and such an experienced campaigner, um, let alone the fact that he's got Greg Sugar sitting in the bike, who I think is one of the best technical drivers in Australasia, I think uh, you certainly can't write him off. Um, and I'd love to see him win it because this wasn't a race that they had to come to, particularly if they are still thinking of going back to Europe. Um, but I think they would deserve to win it for the fact that they have come here and supported the race and got behind it. And would you believe that Cambridge Raceway ran a promotion, and you'll love this, where they ran a sweepstake? where you could buy a ticket into the sweepstake and you'd be drawn a horse. If you, one of your numbers got drawn out, you'd be drawn a horse in the, the TAB mobile trot. So eight I bought tickets it. drawn. I, yeah, I, I brought one too. Number three, Just Believe, goes to race commentator Matthew Cross. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so I know that there'll be uh, a couple of people sitting down in Canterbury watching on on Friday night that'll be cheering for him pretty loudly as well. So uh, it's going to be going to be interesting, but oh, she's going to be a fantastic race. I can't wait to see this one. Has he got to pay for a honeymoon? Did I hear Greg say, and also a house? Is that what's got to be done with the money? It's already Greg's already spent his money for him. Is that right? Uh, he's got a house, definitely. He said something um, about a mortgage or that on the live coverage last night. There might be a future honeymoon yes, um, at some funny. point. So yeah. He was a wee bit cheeky in what he said, and I was like, you know, no, okay, we'll just, I can't remember exactly. I might, if, if, if Matty's watching this, he might have hit the floor. He's like, no, 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 I don't think I said that. Hey, um, it's a great race. Well done to Greg and Nina Hope and Ben Hope. Qualifying three horses. We're getting three horses into this. Um, no, no mean feat. I know one's an emergency. No mean feat, though. Oh, incredible. Um, and and Midnight Dash is a bit of a tradesman trotter as well. He, he's a great follower of speed. He probably lacks a bit of the brilliance of some of the other ones, but he made up many links on Muscle Mountain when Muscle Mountain was fresh up late and run him to, you know, within a link. So uh, if he'd drawn one, I sort of had him maybe mapping as a horse that could have snuck a top four, but it's going to be hard for him from the middle line with the amount of speed unless uh, Tony Hurley has been booked to drive him. Tony can snag right back and somehow get himself into a good position early. But uh, yeah, him, even Mystic Max, who came to the party late after a good run a couple of weeks ago, uh, big moment for Michael Purden. Um, obviously on a night where you would expect the Purden name to be to the forefront, um, to see Michael in there with a, a horse of his own. Um, alongside, you know, Dad, Mark and Brother Nathan, who, of course, don't need any introduction. Uh, Michael's done a great job with this horse. And he's got one thing in his favour, and that's the country's number one driver in Blair Nathan Orange, who doesn't make many mistakes at all. What did he do for the other day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just just a casual day at the office for Blair. Yeah. It's like you don't even want to interview him unless he's driven four or more, do you? You just sort of let it, let it keep going. Yeah, two's, um, a, two's a bad day for Blair. <laughs> <laughs> it is a it is a great race. Well done to Cambridge. Well done to Harness Racing New Zealand, and well done to the New Zealand racing public for getting behind it. I think um, I meant what I said with David. A lot of administrators. It was talked about for a long time over here, and everyone said, "Oh, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work." Um, this works, and this, as I said, I love the grins, but I think this race. If not this year, if it continues on this trajectory in a couple of years, it'll be the race that uh, everyone will be heading to New Zealand for. And, oh, there's a pacing race on at the same time. I think um, it, it definitely has that potential. Puts it on the world stage. This Australia versus New Zealand thing too. Got to correct a few things. I get into trouble for claiming Farlap every now and then with Cam Bray. Uh, Queen Elite is definitely a Kiwi, trained by a Kiwi. And I'm not disowning her. I think she's done a great job. She's owned by Kiwis. And Call Me The Breeze got FRA. That's France. He's only been in Australia for four months and we're claiming him as an Aussie. Yeah, but you can do that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I Queen Queen Elite is an interesting one. Um, obviously trained by a Kiwi. Uh, owned and, by a Kiwi. We will, we will claim Lil because yeah. he is a Kiwi. Yeah. Uh, owned by Kiwis. But uh, it just adds a whole other layer to the thing. Yeah. Um, and obviously we talked about it going into the Intermunions last year, Paul, you know, the lack of that trans-Tasman rivalry that we kind of live um, and it, I mean, it's all in good fun. It's it's a bit of banter and it's a bit of a chance to, you know, have a bit of a dig here and there. But uh, you certainly won the barrier draw stakes. Um, and, and as a true blue Kiwi, I, I'm hesitant to say it, but I will say it. I hope that's the only thing you win uh, over the course of the week. 
I'd be surprised if one of the Aussies doesn't win that one, I must say. So, but anyway, it's, it is a, a great race. We could go through the whole card. The one other race I did want to touch on, because we do have a few Australians where we got, uh, I'm in trouble, I'll get into trouble there. But anyway, there's at least six, is there? Must be six, because there's no mm -hmm. So, yeah, six Australian ladies taking on each other in the Dorothy Cuts Invitational. This is, they're building something over there at Cambridge, aren't they? They are indeed. Who doesn't um, know the backstory? Dorothy Cutts was the first woman in harness racing in New Zealand to win a full totaliser race. Yep. Uh, and incidentally, she actually won it at Cambridge in 1970, I think, off the top of my head. Hang on. Um, I just, just cut out. What date did you say? Because I actually know. 1979. Yep. 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 Uh, I'm trying to think back. And I think the horse's name might have been Kenworthy off the top of my head. But uh, I actually. That, um Dorothy is, is still alive and she's very excited to hear that there's been a race named in her honor and uh, it's going to be it's going to be really really exciting so uh, it's good to see good to see uh the Australian flavor there um do we actually work out which side of the the Tasman Sea Natalie Rasmussen sits on she's um she's an Aussie hang on Dorothy's going to be there I can tell you that too. Dorothy will be there on the night. She's going to. Oh, which is which is excellent. That that that's that's so cool. Um, and I mean, it's a good chance for a few of our South, South Island drivers who perhaps have never driven at Cambridge. I don't think Kirsten Green has ever driven there. Reading a Facebook post earlier in the week, so she's going up to have a drive. Um, Emily Johnson, who of course is from Australia, had, but has been driving here in New Zealand for the last month to six weeks. Um, she's a part of it. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, another exciting aspect to the night. I think Emily, so Emily's representing Australia, but I think she's a Kiwi that went to Australia. Yeah. And then came back because unfortunately someone pulled out. So that's a reason why if anyone turns around and says, no, she's a Kiwi, I think I think Emily's just the um, UN. She's the United Nations of uh, of this. She's she's working for Australia because we need one more in our team. And I mean, well, when that if that's the case, then we'll just take Natalie because she's lived here for over ten years. <laughs> Mate, I've got a lot of Kiwi blokes that live over here, and they still call themselves Kiwis. And they've been longer than ten years, and they won't go home. On Natalie, I will say she will win that race. She will. Um, she drives skipper for Tony Hurley who uh, races in the colours of For Real, who, uh, sorry, it's out of For Real, who was a very, very good race mare trained by Tim Butt, uh, multiple group one winning yeah. race mare. Um, so, yeah, he is doing a super job, Skipper. He was such a good winner at Cambridge last week. Um, and I'm sure Tony Hiller, he would have had a wry smile on his face when he saw Ian Rasmussen uh, sliding into the bike to drive his horse um, in what's going to be a great race. Yeah, well, there's some dead set racing royalty. We've got Karen Manning, the most winningest driver in the world. Nikki Chilcott, up until middle of last year, late last year, she was the leading New Zealand driver. Of course, Sam Ottery is now the leading lady driver, sorry, female driver. Brittany Graham, Amanda Turnbull, Alan Tormey, I said that, the Queen of the South, if you like, Kirsten Green. Um, we've also got, where is she there? Sarah O'Reilly, um, in that, who's now having a first year as a senior driver. And then Crystal Hackett and Emily. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot Sheree Tomlinson. I'll be in trouble there as well. Um, but, yeah, and then the two juniors, Crystal and Emily, they didn't look after them. They didn't give them a juniors concession help, did they? Uh, no, not looking at those barrier draws. Um, <laughs> certainly... Yeah, uh, outside of the second row for the both of them is going to make it hard. But it is a star-studded lineup of lady drivers, and I think it's awesome, and I think well done to those. I reckon Kirsten Green will cut a couple of laps around the track. She'll go running. She's back into her running, so she'll she'll run some laps of the track to get familiarised. That's what she'll do. Well, Natalie will probably run with her. Yeah. Um, she she ducked away in between races at Eddington on Friday night to go for a run. So, uh, yeah. Good for the noggin. Yeah, she'll have a jogging buddy. Uh, yeah, it could be fun. I know one that won't go running with them. Karen, she will not. She might watch them, but she won't run it. And uh, I can say that. Because, uh, I don't think Sarah O'Reilly would join in either. No. No. The rest of them will get into trouble if we say anything. You know that, don't you? Um, but, Correct. Uh, rest of the night, mate. Um, what are the other race highlights that we can look forward to? Uh, there's Garrett Side Stakes, three-year-old Colts and oh, Garrett yeah. uh, the race after. And, of course, uh, We Walk By Faith, the Cold Chisel. Yeah. Um, who, of course, one of or well, two of the leading three year olds over here in this country. Um, we Walk by Faith was very, very unlucky in the Great Northern Derby, who of, which of course was won by Cold Chisel. Um, they both draw on the outside of the front line, so there's uh, a little bit of work for the pair of them to do. Vesem's finally drawn a barrier, 
Um, but he just wasn't quite good enough last week for me to want to back him again. Uh, he was beaten by a very nice horse called Little Spike, who's worth keeping an eye out on, trained by Arna Donnelly. He's a son of Terra Love. He's very fast. But, yeah, excited to see where you walk by faith. Uh, fantastic undercard. There's a great uh, Northern Championship Trotters final. Um, there's some really nice horses going around in there. Congrazia's love, Joker's Hill from the uh, the Telfa Barn, um, Bernie and Michelle have got a runner in there. Dave and Claire McGowan who have won a lot of trotting races in the last few months. Uh, they've got a couple in there as well. Casey you know, driving one for him as well. So which is interesting. I should pick up the drive on Castana. Oh, nice. Yeah, excellent. So um yeah, it'll be good to see them going around and a really good country cups pace too. Uh, Republican Party, who's obviously the first emergency for the race by Grins, is there. Um, Jolly Mott, who's won his last three on end, another of Arna's team. Uh, Mark Burden has been driving him. Yeah. He's super winning three at Auckland in a row. Um, be a good step up for him this week because there's some nice country cup sources in there who aren't going to hand it to him on a platter. But, uh, yeah, just we touched on it with David, and that was always one of the things for me was building up that undercard on this night. And... Full credit to David and his team at Cambridge because they've done a fantastic job. And um, it's not just the two races that you want to watch. There's actually some really intriguing stuff throughout the night. No, absolutely. Is. I just want to highlight one thing for you before we get off this card here. With the uh, the Sire Stakes for the three-year-olds, it is a Victor Australia versus New Zealand. We walk by faith, bred in Australia. So we'll claim him, uh, bred at Benstud. Um, so he was here. Cold Chisel classic Australian song, so we'll claim him. And then Vesem is um, obviously by Vincent, so we'll claim him as well. So, yeah, good luck to you Kiwis in that race. I reckon the Aussies might come out on top, mate. You do whatever you want, and I'll just say, aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> A bit of fun. Rightio. Um, now, I, I flippantly said that we might skip over everything else. One, just a, a recap, probably uh, the meeting from Chevron. Um, I won't bring it up too much and we won't have to go over about that, but there was a couple of nice... Oh, Cheviot. Cheviot, sorry. Um, on Sunday, just gone, there was some nice little winners. Yeah, there was. Uh, Crandall Getty's got a really nice two-year-old filly called Freera Dream. She's by down by the seaside, um, just a continuation of the Crean and Chrissy and Carter run that we're seeing over here in New Zealand at the moment. They're flying. Beat a very nice filly and spicy crunch from the Telford team. Now, the pair of them actually go to Winton on Saturday. They've got a great Carter racing down at Winton on Saturday afternoon for a $70,000 race uh, that's been... A late addition to the calendar, and it's actually the first ever group race to be held at the Winton Race Course at the at Winton, um, and over a hundred years of racing there. So, uh, yeah, there it is the Intain two year old Phillies mobile pace, um, Spicy Crunch, Forever Dream. Nathan's got a nice horse there called uh, Captain's Mistress, I think it is, um, yes. who's done a good job. So, yeah, she was a very good winner on uh, Sunday, and the Chibiat Business Cup was won by a horse called Mawanga. Uh, Regan Todd trained Robbie Close driven so all these country cups races that we're having over here in New Zealand are all culminating towards a $110,000 race to be held at Addington next month yep. um, so points are awarded to each horse as they go through uh, any of these qualifying races and then the field's determined by the highest um, point scorers throughout so that one there got Mawanga in because he obviously won at Omaru a couple of weeks ago but there's a few horses that still need to have the one more mandatory start to actually qualify so um going down to winton on saturday we've got horses like pin seeker from johnny cox's team who could be anything judging by his win on premier day a couple of weeks ago and then there's the methan or oh, sorry it's the brown pub methan mount hut trotting club cup on saturday at methan um, so both those races have meeting in a sec, so you're right, yeah. But yeah, both those races are qualifiers for that country cups championship, so uh, it's shaping up to be an unreal field because you've got horses like Homebush Lair, Dalton Shard, and that that have been performing consistently. Uh, not many of them actually realize that a horse called Ultra Meteor had actually already qualified for the final, uh, before he went on a double group race winning spree over the course of a week, um, the last couple of weeks for, for Stephen, Amanda Telfer, and Johnny Cox. So, uh, it's going to be a fantastic race. I think it's May 10, $110,000 two mile stand, I think, from memory. So, Corbin, uh, Corbin Newman won it last year with one of the great salutes, and it was 150 to one from memory. Yeah. I can't think of its name. It's just uh, like was it Marty Louie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's always a really exciting race. And I like the fact that it's been building up for the entire year to get to that point because it just adds a little bit more interest to it. So, yeah, Mawanga did the job and qualified himself for it with a good win on Sunday. He was really, really good from a promising horse from Southland called Tech McLeod, who's uh, going to be a really nice horse in 12 months' time, I think. It's good. It's great intrigue. There's a couple of those names. Like I saw Pimp Seeker win his second race, I think it was, uh, on the grass. And, you know, a few of you guys were singing his praises and you just kept getting better and better. He's a he's a beautiful horse. And then you got Ultimedia, like a, a tried tried and true dead set. So there's that little bit of intrigue going through as well of horses going up uh, and horses already there, established horses are, 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 that are there. So there's a lot well, of uh, The good thing is that, I was talking to someone about it over the weekend. New Zealand harness racing, particularly in that level below the Group 1 top, top horses, is in a really good position at the moment. We've got some fantastic stock running around that are going to eventually take that next step and become New Zealand Trotting Cup horses, New Zealand free-for-all, all those feature Group 1 races. And horses like Old Amiti or Mawanga, um, Ahoka Connor, the likes, um, Craig Ferguson's obviously stepping out Wagstar this weekend for the first run where we know how good he is. Yeah. The ones that were maybe two or three lengths behind the Don't Stop Dreamings and the Merlins as the three-year-olds are now stepping out and developing into being really race hard and good country cup sources who are eventually going to work their way to the top class, which is which is great. And you need that progression to keep those fields full as we go forward. And some of those horses that you mentioned there before, like a horse like Wagstar and those, they could jump on a plane and share a trip across here to Australia but they don't stay in Australia then because there's enough no. money on them for them back there as well. So feature race times, have them come out um, and go from there. And I, I can see more Australian horses heading across. There'll be more trotters heading across. got no doubt about mm. that. Um, right, uh, Methan on Sunday. Uh, now, you guys have got something uh, a little bit different, if you like. Uh, you did the, what was it, the Three Wise Monkeys? Was it three Wise it? Men. It was Men. No, well, I thought that. I mean that in a nice way. It was um, Tony Hurley, Morris McKendry. And I'm in trouble too now. His name's left the hill over drive here. Ricky May got it. Ricky, Ricky <laughs> May, yep. Um, that was a brilliant day where they drove all day, all through the races. And you've done something very different with this meet, a diff, similar, sorry, with this meeting, I gather, on Sunday. Yeah, so what they've done is they've created the Anzac 18,000, which is a nod to the fact that between Chris Alford, Greg Sugars, Ricky May, and Morris McKendry, there's 18,000 winners between them. <laughs> which is quite mind-boggling. Um, obviously, Morris and Ricky, two of the top three most successful drivers in New Zealand. Um, Chris Alford, I don't think he needs much of an introduction, probably nor does Greg Sugars. So the club worked hard to try and confirm to get Chris and Greg to, to come down, obviously being Grins Weekend and being the fact that they were here already. Um, and really pleasing to see that they have. So the way it's worked is there are six um, specified races throughout the day and the top four rated horses in each race are allocated to one of those four drivers. Um, so say, for instance, Ricky May was to get the top ranked horse, uh, top rated horse in one race, he might end up getting the bottom rated, uh, the bottom of the four rated horses in the next race kind of thing. So the top four horses in each race, over six races are allocated to those four guys. They'll shoot for individual glory and, of course, trans-Tasman glory as well. So um, it's really exciting. And um, I don't know whether Greg's driven on a grass track. I think, I think Greg has. I don't think Chris has, or it might be. Yeah. Other one has and one hasn't anyway. So, yeah. So it's it's quite exciting to see them all becoming a part it's, of the day. Yeah. So, Greg may not have. Greg, Chris definitely has because they used to, we used to have them from time to time at um, what's the Orange? No, nah, Mooney Valley. Mooney Valley, they used to have them back in the Mark day. Mark Murray used to go back and call a grass track meeting. Was it at Orange? Could have. Every year? Could yeah. have. Yeah. Um, but really pleasing to see, too, that these guys aren't just coming down for these six races. I can tell you that they've, um, well, Greg in particular, because he's driving the entire Markham team over the course of the meeting as well outside of them. So they picked up a few outside drives, too, which is good, and they're going to be a big part of the day there. Um, and we're getting right behind it with a bit of publicity and things like that, which is really cool. And um, just to see those guys out in action and actually acknowledge their contribution to the game um, is really important because... Ricky and Morris are both Meffin boys. They yep. both went to school here. So that's really cool. Um, and obviously, yeah, uh, having having Chris and Greg here is going to add that little bit more, uh, continue that trans-Tasman trans rivalry that we've been talking about for the last, how long have we been recording? Uh, a while. Don't look at that. Uh, 
Um, yeah, absolutely. I think well done to you guys thinking outside the square, doing something different. I will be. Um, I've got a yielding pro, a yielding sale on that day, but I'll be keeping one eye on most of those races as well uh, throughout the day. I think that's uh, it's a great idea. And it will no doubt that you get a crowd there anyway at Methan. Um, all those grass tracks, you tend to get big crowds at Methan. one of the more picturesque ones, that's for sure. Um, but well done. It'll bring a couple more people there, but hopefully get some scribes writing about it, people talking about it like you and I, um, and build it into something really, really good. So I think that's pretty exciting as well. Oh, 100%. And, you know, Methan seem pretty committed to doing something similar each year at this meeting um, and acknowledgement. So uh, it'll be exciting to see what they come up with next after this one. But uh, you're yeah, definitely look, looking forward to Sunday and, and being out there and um, seeing the hype that those guys create. Yep. Matey, thank you. Good show. Uh, we will be, as I said, changing it up a little bit. We have got Diamonds Day coming up. We've got quite a few other things we might preview. Do a bit of long-range previewing, if you like, with some of those. We'll touch on the two-year-olds. Keep changing it up. Keep trying to get it out there and get the message out there. But um, love talking New Zealand harness racing, mate. Thank you very much. Good luck on Friday night to you and the boys get paid. Have some fun. Make some money. Make some people happy. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, go out there with uh, a, a game plan in mind and we'll see how things unfold. But most of all, just trying to create that interest and get as many eyeballs on harness racing as possible. Um, I think we're going to achieve that this weekend, so pretty excited about it. And uh, go the Kiwis. Always a pleasure to talk with you, Paul. Yep, and as I said, Farlap is a purely Australian horse. Thank you very <laughs> much, mate. Right, see you, mate.